Greetings Multiverse! With everything that's happened in this year, we're sure fans have poured over and anally examined every single detail of Wonder Woman 1984 while being forced to wait for it. Now with the movie finally coming out this month, we took a look at some interesting facts you may have overlooked, including some early news about Wonder Woman 3. So let's check out 5 things you might not know about Wonder Woman 1984. Number 5. Wonder Woman holds the record for most movie appearances in a year. Okay, technically this isn't a Wonder Woman 1984 fact, but it's so cool we just had to mention it. At a time where the likes of Captain America, Spider-Man etc can appear in their own movies in spring and a big Avengers team up a few months later, seeing your favourite comic book heroes twice in a year is no big deal. However, the last time Wonder Woman showed up in 2017, she appeared in a record free theatrical comic book movies. Gal Gadot played Diana in the first Wonder Woman movie and in Justice League, um, Justice League, but Wonder Woman also also appeared in the Lego Batman movie that same year. Only a small appearance there, but it's still an official appearance in an official comic book movie, bringing Wonder Woman's 2017 count up to three. Despite Batman getting all the attention, she's actually appeared in three of the four Lego movies so far, where she's played by Kofi Smulders, Maria Hill played Wonder Woman? Wow. Number four, Man of Steel's Hans Zimmer is the composer. This is a bigger deal than you realise. Hans Zimmer is the iconic composer behind the Dark Knight trilogy, Man of Steel, Pirates of the Caribbean, Transformers, and many other great movie scores. For Wonder Woman fans though, he composed the amazing shredding theme in Batman v Superman that stole the movie during the entire Doomsday fight. You know the theme. Yeah, that one. However, when it came to composing the Wonder Woman movie, he declined in favour of Rupert Gregson Williams, who also did Aquaman and did a fantastic job on both. After Batman v Superman, Zimmer decided to retire from superhero movies, only briefly dipping his toe into the last X-Men movie, Dark Phoenix. He's properly coming out of DC movie retirement though for Wonder Woman 1984. Why? Because he wrote Diana's kick-ass music motif, that's why. As he says, we had done it live and it became more and more interesting, so I just thought it was important to sort of finish it. Plus, director Patty Jenkins had a really interesting idea for the music as well. It's a story you want to be part of. So Wonder Woman 1984 has a great story and a composer who can knock the score out of the park. Sweet. Number three, Maxwell Lord is based on Lex Luthor, not Donald Trump. Not a political thing in any way here, but you can see why the all smiles and hairdo villain Max Lord of Wonder Woman 1984 has drawn some comparison with Donald Trump, not only in terms of look, but also he's a businessman who seemingly becomes President of the United States if the trailer is anything to go by. While Trump didn't become President thanks to a magic wish granting space crystal, there's certainly grounds for comparison between Trump and Maxwell Lord. However, in an interview with Total Film magazine, director Patty Jenkins denies this is the case. That has a couple of better influences in mind for Max. Michael Douglas's Gordon Gecko from Wall Street, and more excitingly for DC fans, Gene Hackman's Lex Luthor from Superman the Movie and Superman 2. Patty Jenkins has mentioned her love for Superman the Movie in interviews before, including its influence on her Wonder Woman movies, so it's not a surprise that when the series introduces an overconfident sociopathic criminal business that Lex Luthor would come to mind. Even in a universe where Luthor himself is less Gordon Gecko and more slightly less evil Mark Zuckerberg. Number two, it's moved release date six times. Welcome to the modern world of movie going folks. Thanks to the coronavirus pandemic, we'll be seeing movies change their release dates many times. Although that doesn't explain why Wonder Woman 1984 already had three separate release dates before COVID-19 even hit. To go through them quick, Wonder Woman 1984's release dates have been December the 13th, 2019, moved up to November 1st, 2019, put back to June the 5th, 2020, and the pandemic hit, and it was delayed again to August the 14th, 2020, and October the 2nd, 2020, then December 25th, 2020, where it's currently due to be released in theatres alongside an HBO Max video on demand release. But things don't end there. Outside the US, the release date has changed to pretty much any time between December the 16th and the end of January 2021. UK and a lot of Europe, that's me, will get the movie in cinemas on December the 16th, but Italy won't get it until January the 28th. What a mess. And as we move to the final thing you might not know about Wonder Woman 1984, the coronavirus rears its head again to strike the sequel. Number 1. Wonder Woman 3 will be influenced by the COVID-19 pandemic. It's not surprising that we don't know much about Wonder Woman 3 other than that it being all mapped out back in 2019. Unlike the first two movies, will be set post-Justice League in the present day. 
However, since 2019, we've had the notable event that was the Apocalypse. And according to director Patty Jenkins, Wonder Woman 3 will have to be revised to include the end result of the coronavirus pandemic, if there is an ending. Speaking with Total Film, Jenkins says of Wonder Woman 3, I really hit the pause button, because the truth is, where that plotline was coming from was our state of being before coronavirus. And so I want to make sure that I'm totally absorbing whatever the result of this pandemic is. The plotline will stay very similar, probably, but I want to make sure it's influenced by all of this. So was Wonder Woman forced to wear a mask, ironically? Batman and Alfred in lockdown and Wayne Manor together? Superman forbidden from getting within two meters of people he needs to save? Cyborg organising Justice League meetings over Zoom, which The Flash probably wasn't very happy about. Is the entire pandemic a plot by Cersei? Of course, now that Patty Jenkins is directing a Star Wars Rogue Squadron movie for Disney, we might be in for a longer wait for Wonder Woman 3 in any case. Thanks for watching folks, please leave a like and subscribe to DC Comics Gamer if you haven't already, and please share this video around, it really helps me out. You can check out more DC Comics videos on my channel from everything in movies, TV and games, and we'll have more on Wonder Woman very soon. Thanks for watching folks, Multiverse, out.